All right, welcome everybody to another mixing video. Today we're going to be doing part three of mixing a, a song start to finish. Um, and today we're going to just be, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into the mixer here and I'm going to add um, some analog flavor to all of these plugins as well as add my mix bus chain. Um, and when I say analog flavor, I mean I'm going to be adding um, Slate VTM as well as... Um, the uh, VCC virtual channel. Um, so actually, let's let's add that first. Oops, sorry, I typed that in wrong there. So virtual mix rack. And um, when I was doing a rough mix when we were sending these tracks back and forth, um, I was using the Neve channel here. And um, I'm gonna have this on the second insert because. Um, I actually, uh, my first insert is always the VTM. And um, the thing about this is it, it does actually add some noise, but um, I can, you know, I could get over that noise because I can, I can get rid of it later, as well as uh, I feel that the noise sort of, um, it imparts a character, you know, it, it feels real to me. Um, all the great albums that I've really ever listened to have noise and tape hiss and things like that. So to me, um, having noise is uh, not such a big deal. So um, that being said, here on the uh, the master fader, I'm going to use the uh, mix bus version rather than the channel. And um, what I'm going to do right now is just play a little bit of this. And um, I'm going to bypass all of those VCC plugins just so you can hear how night and day it is. Um, it's one of those things where if you just put it on one channel, it's a little bit subtle. Um, but as a whole, it just it makes the whole thing come to life. So, yeah, let's take a listen to that real quick. Okay, so to me, um, without it, it just uh, doesn't feel as glued together. I know some people hate those kind of terms, but to me, uh, it makes sense here. Um, that bass just kind of falls apart. And um, really, um, that's a characteristic that uh, the Neve consoles are, are known for, is having that sort of low-end um, low girth to it, I guess. So I'm gonna uh, going to add the <clears throat> excuse me. I'm going to add the VTM now, um, and uh, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use the two-inch 16 track um, on my multi-tracks, which is actually uh, I have more than 16 tracks, but that's okay because I'm uh, 
getting rid of all the noise here. Um, on the mix bus, I will use the two inch, or the, excuse me, half inch two track, and I will not get rid of the noise on that. Um, I'm running a newer style tape because this is sort of a uh, more modern sounding track. I'm using 15 IPS because I want that fatness in the low end. Okay, so um, yeah, I'm just gonna um, drag that onto everything. And um, on my kick here, I'm gonna use low bias, as well as when I get to the bass guitar, um, those tracks will also have low bias. So um, the low end sort of uh, gets saturated more than um, than the other frequencies. Uh, not necessarily more than, but it saturates uh, qu uh, quicker, I guess, um, is the best way to describe it. And um, if you couldn't hear the difference with the, the virtual mix rack, um, you will really, really hear the difference with uh, the virtual tape machine here. Okay, so... Um, now the reason I'm adding this here on the third slot is because I'm going to um, have a bus compressor here in the second slot and in fact this virtual tape machine will be moved down um, as time goes on so um, yeah let's listen to uh, that now so I'll open up this tape machine because it looks awesome and uh, yeah, we'll just pick up where we left off and um, I'll bypass uh, in and out the VTM and VCC combination here. <laughs> So um, as you can hear, uh, there was some really, really uh, great saturation going on there. Um, the the high end just cleans up in a way that I can't really, I can't clean it up in that same exact way with just EQ. Um, everything just feels like it's part of the same song. Um, the low end fattens up once again. Um, this is just this is one of the best plugins to ever be created in my opinion um, I love the uh, the Steven Slate su stuff and uh, what you'll notice throughout this uh, little mixing series is that I'm going to be um, using a lot of his stuff so um, what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna add the VBC rack and um, there's three plugins here and um, what I'm actually going to do is um, I'm only going to use compression off the FG Gray, but I'm going to run it through the other ones just to get the color of it. Okay, so um, let me back this up a little bit here. And um, 
yeah, we'll add some compression. Um, the reason I high pass this and bring the threshold down is because I want to make sure that there's absolutely no compression going on from here. I just want to run it through the tubes and transformers. And um, I have a ratio of one to one here, so there will definitely not be any compression here. I'm just going to really get the harmonic coloration of this uh, drive knob here. So yeah, let's let's add some bus compression now. Oops, excuse me. I'll just start it wherever. Um, bar fifty-five. <laughs> So, um, the tone of these uh, bus compressors are just absolutely amazing. I mean, I can't uh, recommend these enough. Um, so, um, pretty much I keep it just stock how it is. Um, side chain high pass at 91, so basically everything 91 and under is not triggering this compressor. Um, auto release. Um, I'm using a light ratio of uh, 2 to 1, um, medium attack, and uh, yeah, I'm knocking off in the verse about 1 dB, in the chorus about 2 to 3 dB. Anything more than that, um, and I think it squashes down a little too hard. Um, but you could compress it more and blend it with this mix knob, but um, I like this setting. and. Um, uh, if you read the manual in this, um, it recommends setting this drive to around 6, and um, yeah, I see why, because uh, anything more than that, it distorts it a little too much. Um, less than that um, can be nice, but the sweet spot is definitely around 6. And um, 
the sound of this uh, FG Mu is just, this is one of the best compressors I've ever heard in my life. Um, actually, all three of these. But um, when they're together, they're, they're really quite something. Um, I'm getting some clipping um, a little bit here. Um, because um, this plugin actually adds a little bit of gain. So, oops. Um, so what I did was I... Uh, I took the makeup gain down about minus two. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much what I always do when I uh, use this plugin. So uh, w now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the virtual tape machine down, and um, I'm going to add. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some uh, uh, an imaging plug uh, plugin. Excuse me. I'm getting tongue twisted here. Okay. So yeah, add some imaging here. Okay, and I like to look at it from this view. So uh, yeah, let's. Uh, I kind of like it around 250. I narrow this to about one 1.5. I bring this down to about 7k or so. All right, let's listen to that and um, image this a little bit. Okay, so uh, let's go over what I did here. Um, narrowed out the base, narrowed out some of the uh, the lower mids there, widened up the the uh, upper mids, and widened up the top end. So um, this is pretty much how I always have this set, kind of stepped up like this. And then what I then added was um, NS1. Um, to get rid of some of that um, that noise from the uh, the VCC because um, I still want it there but um, I just want it turned down basically just want it turned down and um, this is being subtle with this and you can see um, even at this subtle setting um, since there is quite a bit of the noise um, this is turning down minus 40 dB of background noise um, if I were to bypass this and you turn your speakers up, um, you'll hear a lot of hiss. Okay, anyway, um, I uh, don't want to uh, blow your ears up here, so uh, yeah, um, I'll turn it back on here. And um, what I'm going to do now with this is I'm going to leave some space for... Um, for FGX, which it's not a limiter, but um, for lack of knowing what to call it, um, I'm going to call it a limiter. So um, I'm leaving this position open for at the very, very, very end of the mix, I'll raise the level with uh, FGX, which um, I'm actually getting uh, a hotter level than I uh, anticipated. So uh, this is my uh, usual mix bus processing here. And um, I'm going to do a little bit of um, processing here on the pre-master, and then we'll call it a day.
Okay, so let's just talk about that real quick. So, on my pre-master bus, it almost always looks the same way here. Um, I add a little bit of fatness down here at the bottom at uh, 60 hertz. Um, helps my kick punch through a little bit, the bass guitar as well. Um, I add a little bit of 8K. And this is real subtle. Everything on your master bus or pre-master fader, basically anything that's covering all the instruments, you need to be subtle. And also think about um, gain staging as well. So um, really the reason I had to pull this back was more for the pull tech more than the EQ that was going on here. Because um, if you see things are actually, um, for every boost, there's pretty much a cut as well. Um, so adding some shimmer here, 16K, um, adding some presence at 8K, cutting a little bit of nasaliness at 4 and 2, um, 1K kind of sounds, actually I don't think I'm doing anything at 2, um, uh, 1K is also part of that nasaliness. Um, 500 is just kind of muddy, 250 was a little muddy, uh, 125 was helping that bass guitar a lot. 63 that was too close to uh, 60 to me I didn't feel there was any need to boost more of that um, 31 uh, the only reason I really boosted this is because um, actually in fact I didn't talk about this um, I have a high pass at 31 so this kinda just gives it a bump right there at the same area um, I was cutting some mids around here in 500 I just adjusted it but it's close enough um, also cutting some nasaliness around 3k and adding some shimmer here at 12k so um, yeah this is pretty much my general um, mix bus processing and you can see that there is noise there is noise but to me it's nice noise and even though you see that there's nothing being played you can see that there's imaging going on just from the panning and the uh, the noise characteristics as well as this plugin. So as you can see, um, I'm thinking about imaging in depth early on. Um, so moving on, um, I like to add some uh, reverb to everything to make it sound like it was recorded in the same space because uh, half of these tracks were recorded in India and half of them were recorded here in U the USA. So um, yeah, just to give it a sense of um, being recorded in the same space, um, I'm adding this UAD EMT plate. And to uh, kind of accent all these analog model uh, plugins that are happening, um, I use this Sephira, um, and it just kind of accents the, uh, the harmonics. And uh, this is a great plugin. I use the Master Bus process or the Master Bus preset 3D. And the only thing I change is uh, I turn the tape off because I'm using my own tape emulation. And I uh, dial back the output a little bit. And yeah, that's pretty much my master bus chain. And um, once everything else is mixed into that, um, most of the time I feel like the tracks don't have a need to be professionally mastered. Obviously, it could be uh, beneficial to have it professionally mastered but um, in my case I don't have the money to send it to somebody like that so um, I just bring it up to the level and I think it's still um, in a lot of cases um, can compete with some uh, commercial tracks out there so yes I hope that this was a helpful video um, I know this one is longer than the first parts first couple parts of this uh, series but um, I really wanted to show the power of these uh, Slate digital plugins as well as um, explain in detail why I choose the uh, mix bus processing that I do as well as this uh, pre-master. Pre-master is just kind of an extension of my, um, of my mix bus. The real, real reason why I have the pre-master is for if I want to automate this in the chorus to... Uh, to uh, bump it up about a half a dB or something like that, I can do so. Um, but other than that, um, as far as processing, um, this just gives me a little more flexibility. Um, as you can see, I have what I have like nine plugins here. So, 
um, that's a pretty heavy processing uh, processing on the mix bus here. But um, yeah, uh, this will help me to have to do less at this level. Um, you'll notice at the end of the mix that most of these tracks, all that will be on these tracks are just these VTM and VMRs. So um, yeah, that, that makes me happy. <laughs> so um, once again, I hope that you learned something from this video. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I hope that everything it has become more clear why I make the decisions why I do. And um, yeah, I really, really hope you liked this video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, you can give it a thumbs down. That's fine. You're entitled to your opinion, as I always say. And if you really liked it, please subscribe. Give me a comment if you have any questions or concerns. Um, and yeah, uh, I really, really appreciate everybody who watches all these videos. So thank you so much. I hope to see you in the next part. And take care and have a wonderful day. Thank you.